How do you measure the size of a monster wave? We asked Bill Sharp, creator of the Billabong Double XL Big Wave Awards. One of the contest categories awards a prize to the surfer who rides the biggest documented wave of the year. We put together a um, judging panel for made up of you know a group of magazine editors and photo editors who you know have looked at hundreds of thousands of photos and understand what the different angles can mean in adding or subtracting height to the wave. They also include some big wave surfers who aren't in the running that year. Then they focus on the one fixed height object in the frame, the surfer. You know that he is, if he's standing straight up, that he's 5'10", but he's in a bit of a crouch, his knees are bent, you know, there's a certain, um, you know, he's not a full 5'10", and we generally have one of the individuals on the judging panel who is about 5'10", assume, you know, the crouch as close as it can be um, approximated based on the, the, the particular photo, and then measure a height from, you know, the tip of his toe to the top of his head. Once they have the height measured, they just stack them up and do the math. But as you can see, there's a bit of subjectivity to this. So I asked if things ever get animated when formulating these measurements. So there's a little bickering, okay, you know, but, but it's usually just over the most you know, finite, microscopic issues. Okay, well, that you know, the base of the wave should really be, you know, another quarter inch down from where we're marking it. You know, and you go back and forth and go, okay, you, you finally come to a, a consensus. But there, there, there tends not to be just someone completely in left field. The core group's been doing this for 10 years and, you know, tend to come into agreement rather swiftly. For Discovery News, I'm James Williams.